It's a mess out there in global supply chains. What is going on? Explanations from my guest today, Charles Armstrong. He is founding partner with Orion Advisors Group. Hello, Charlie. Hey, how you doing, Bob? Thanks for joining me. So answer that question for me, would you please? What the heck is going on? But we're talking about the global supply chain. You know, I, I boil it down, Bob, into we've got three things. We've got a capacity problem. We've got a constraint problem. We've got a demand problem. Mm -hmm. on a global basis. That's that's what we're dealing with. Okay, it's uh, pretty tough. How did we come to this state of affairs? Well, we didn't get here overnight. We've had a global supply chain and we've had some capacity constraints in the past. You know, typically there was around the, the peak season, the fall season, everybody knew it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, but in 2020, right, we had a series of unplanned events. We had COVID which shut down the production out of Asia. And then that created you know, kind of a bullwhip effect. Once it started to come back up, then the steamship lines were moving the product to the US. We ended up with a backlog in the US. About the time we thought we got through that constraint, the Suez Canal came around. Mm -hmm. We threw another bullwhip effect into the, into the network start to stabilize. We came back, COVID shut down Yang Tian. Now, those are just three examples of unplanned, mm -hmm. unplanned constraints, which had residual impacts on the steamship lines as they got assets in the U.S. and they were out of balance. Mm -hmm. And as that went through the process, then the ports, right? You know, we had a situation where all of that surge went to the ports and the ports didn't have the capacity. And so this process just continued on a rolling basis to the point where these series of constraints, a port's throughput, and the unplanned events sort of created, it took a, a utilization problem to the next level. It's a problem waiting to happen. All it needed was a few more little elements to, uh, but if I, if I see 65 ships uh, berthed offshore of the ports of LA and Long Beach. And I say, oh, well, the problem is that there's not enough uh, space in the ports and not enough labor in the ports. And that's why I have a feeling I'm oversimplifying the situation. Am yep. I not? Eh, the number's 70 today, by the way. Okay, I'm sorry, 70. So, so what's so, the 70 mean? Well, it's 70 vessels that are not docking. Mm -hmm. More importantly than that is that it's 70 vessels that may sit out there for 21 days. That 21 days is equivalent to the entire trip from Asia. Mm -hmm. which means now not only do we have vessels with extended lead times of 21 days, but we just took capacity out of the network again because those vessels will not get back to Asia in time mm -hmm. to pick up their next trip. Now, back to your point. So, so at the port, why are the vessels sitting in the water? They're sitting because not so much because the cranes can take the containers off, mm -hmm. but there's capacity to ground the ocean containers the infrastructure, the, the drayage process, the, the digestion, the lack of labor and distribution centers, the domestic mm -hmm. transportation can't absorb that demand, that peak. It's sort of like you, know, you squeeze a balloon, the air pops up someplace. And so that one constraint creates demand in another area mm -hmm. and it can't be absorbed. Right. So that's, it's, it's, again, it goes back to demand, capacity and constraints and then the, uh, the building effect of how existing capacity is no longer uh, effective right. because we lost it through the utilization. So demand for ships, demand for port space, demand for chassis, demand for containers, trailers, the whole thing. It's all one big package, right? Correct. Yeah. So, okay, uh, is this going to happen next year? Is, is this a long-term thing? When are we going to see some relief? Well. I think the reality of it is, is next year is going to be a repeat of this year. Oh boy, that's that's a great thing to hear. That, uh, well, <laughs> it, it's the reality. Uh, the, the truth of the matter is, is that the only thing that's going to be different between this year and next year is the unplanned. If we don't have the Suez Canal, we don't have Yang Tian, we don't have COVID, mm -hmm. we won't have that. 
We'll have which, something else. Well, but there could be something else. But, was, but if we don't have those three events, which we haven't had for what, what, probably the last decade, three in a row, mm -hmm. then what we just have to deal with is the fact that we have this capacity demand situation. Inventories are still low. We're still playing catch up. Mm -hmm. So we have an artificial demand that has to be absorbed and that won't get absorbed until late spring, depending on who you talk to. And yeah. right behind late spring comes fall and it comes the same time every year. Here comes another peak season. So what's the fix, Charlie? Well, I think if, if, if I'm a shipper, I have to understand those things. Understand that carrier relationships are gonna be critical. The carriers care about asset utilization. Mm -hmm. So great forecasting, helping them turn their assets will hopefully get you access to more capacity because they got to maintain their utilization. Secondly, I think I take a look at my demand. You know, I just mentioned fall comes the same time every year. If we think next year is going to be a repeat of this year, plus or minus another Suez Canal, maybe you need to take a look at your lead times. Maybe you need to try and avoid those peak periods strategically for a year. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is, I think you need to be prepared to pay some premiums. You know, the reality of it is, is we're gonna be short on capacity and that capacity, if you want to move, you're gonna to have to probably pay a peak season surcharge or a premium to get onto the vessel. So you need to build that into your budget. Charlie, I wanna thank you so much for your insights, your honest evaluation and some suggestions as to how this terrible situation might fix itself at some point. Thanks for being with me today. Bob, great to see you again. I've been speaking with Charlie Armstrong of Orion Advisors Group. Thank you very much for watching.